In this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to use the MATLAB function ODE45 for use in mathematical modelling. In ECM1704 mathematical investigations, MATLAB can be used as an alternative to Simulink for those who prefer to get more hands on with their code. This will be especially of interest to people who attempted the cardiac question in ECM1709 last term. So we're going to be using a MATLAB function called ODE45, which is an inbuilt MATLAB function, will be available on every version, and will solve differential equations for us. So the first thing we want to do is start a new script. This script will store our differential equation. There's a certain way in which this needs to be written, but luckily you don't need that many lines of code. Firstly, I'm going to write the equation in a comment at the top. I'm writing this in a comment because I don't want it to interfere with the code. The equation we're going to solve, first of all, is x prime of t. So this is a derivative of x with respect to t is equal to x of t times 1 minus x of t. So we've got a function whose derivative depends on x of t times 1 minus x of t. We're going to use this as an input to ODE45, so we're going to need to write it as a function. The function, whenever you're calling ODE45, you'll always use the same function header. You'll need an output, dx, equals the name of your function. I'll just call this example 1. And you'll need two inputs, t and x. t is the time at which this time step is being solved at, and x is the value of x at this time. Because this equation doesn't depend on time, we're not going to use the value of t in calculating the x. All we're going to do is write dx, which is our gradient, is equal to x times 1 minus x. Because of the way ODE45 is written by MATLAB, you still need this t, even though MATLAB tells you that you don't. If you don't have this t, it will confuse ODE45 later on. If we save this, it will automatically save under the correct file name. And that's our ODE written and saved in MATLAB. Now we just need to solve it. So ODE45 has two outputs, t, which are the values of time you want your equation solved at, and x, which is a vector or matrix the same length as t, that will give you the values of x at every point in t. This will be equal to ODE45, the function we're going to be using. An ODE45 takes three inputs. The first one is your function. We use an at symbol here to signify that this is a function being inputted to another function. The second input is a vector of time values that you want your equation solved at. So we can start from zero, go in steps of 0.01. This colon here is telling us we're going in steps of 0.01 up to, let's say, 10. And we'll use an initial condition of x0 equals 0.1. So your three inputs are your function name, the time values you want your solution evaluated at, and your initial condition. If we run this with a semicolon, Nothing will be outputted, but down here in the workspace, we have t and x stored. So we can now plot them. Because this only has one variable, the only thing we can really do is just plot x against t. So we can do that with the plot command, plot t, comma, x. And that will give us this sigmoid-like curve. So it starts at 0.1, which was our initial condition. And because of the way this equation works, it ends up to 1 and then flattens out. So that's a solution of one ODE with one variable using ODE45. 
We can extend this to two variables, or as many as you like. But when we do that, instead of a scalar value x, x will be a vector containing all of our variables. So let's go through another example. Let's make a new script, or a new function. And now we'll solve the coupled system. x of t equals 2 times x of t times y of t. y of t equals minus x of t plus y of t. So now we have two differential equations that are coupled. We're going to use the same function heading as before. Function dx equals example 2 t comma x. Now x and dx will be vectors containing both of our variables. So x1 and dx1 will correspond to x prime of t and x of t. And x2 and dx2 will correspond to y of t and y prime of t. So the way we're going to write this, we'll have dx1. So the first element in dx will correspond to our first variable in the ODE. So dx1 will be x prime of t. This is equal to 2 times x1, because our first variable is x, times x2. Because our second variable is y. So x1 corresponds to x, x2 corresponds to y. So that will give us the derivative with respect, the x derivative with respect to t. The y derivative will have dx2 equals minus x1 for x plus x2 for y. Semicolon. Save this as example 2. So now dx will be a vector containing the x and y derivatives. When I run this using ODE 4.5, so t comma x equals ODE 4.5, example 2, I'll use the same uh, time values as before. But now we have two initial conditions. So we'll input our initial conditions as a vector. We'll use the same example as Barry in his Simulink tutorial. Initial conditions x0 equals 1, y0 equals 0. When I run this, I get an error. And the error tells us example 2 must return a column vector. So what's happened here is this vector, dx, has become a row instead of a column, which is very easy to fix. dx equals dx apostrophe will take the transpose of dx and turn it into a column. You can press up in MATLAB to repeat a command and CLC to get rid of everything on the command window. So now, because I forgot the semicolon, it's outputted a lot of numbers. Because we have two variables, now t is a big vector of the time values, and x now has two columns. The first column gives us the x values, and the second column gives us the y values. If I close figure 1, close 4, if we plot t against x, uh, colon 1, that will give us the graph of x against t. If we plot t x, colon, comma 2, this will plot us a value of y against t. In Simulink, we had a scope that had both variables on the same graph at the same time. 
If you want to do that in MATLAB, you'll need a command called hold on. Hold on will store the plot so the next one won't overwrite it. So this is our command to plot x against t. This is the command to plot y against t. So this has given us x in blue and y in red. You can then edit this plot by clicking on this button here, which brings you into the property editor, where you can make your lines thicker, put in a legend, and do various things with titles and axis labels and stuff. It's always good to put a legend on any graph that has two lines on it. So that's how we can plot both of our solutions over time. We may also want to plot x against y to see how x varies with y. If you want to do that in MATLAB, we'll use the same command, plot. But now, rather than plotting t against x and then t against y, we will plot x colon comma 1. This is the vector that corresponds to our x values. And plot this against x colon comma 2. So what this is doing is plotting our values of x against our values of y. And you see we get this sort of new shape. So at the beginning, x was 1 and y was 0. So we started here. X looks like it's tending towards zero, and Y went negative on its way towards zero. This gives us a good idea of how X varies alongside Y, and will be very useful when you start plotting lots of our terror equations, because you can see whether your solution is periodic or not. Because if this made a circle and came back to exactly where it started, we know that our solution is perfectly periodic. There's a time and a place for both types of graphs. There are times when you would want the graph like this, and other times where this is more intuitive. But what we've done in this tutorial is solve a differential equation with one variable, and then solve the differential equation that's coupled with two variables. It's this example that is most applicable to you in one ECM 1704 when it comes to plotting Lockwood or Terra solutions.